Hey there, Four States. This is Clark Matthews. Welcome to today's edition of The Author's Corner here on KNEO 91.7 FM, The Word. And uh, we are bringing Carl Gallup's back onto the program, um, talking about his newest book, Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy, and The Return of the Elohim. Um, uh, Carl Gallup's, of course, if, you've, if you're familiar with some of his work, he's written for WorldNet Daily and uh, uh, has lots of, I think he's got six books out so far. And um, he's written this new one here. It's from Defender Publishers. And we'll tell everyone at the end of the program where they can find find out more about it. But Carl Gallops, thanks for coming back onto the program today. Hey, thanks, Clark. It's always my pleasure to be with you, man. Well, if people missed yesterday's program, um, they can go to, go to our website, canio.org, and go to the Author's Corner page and, and, and find that. And I hope, I hope they'll go back and listen to it if they haven't already. But we're talking about this book, Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy, and the Return of the Elohim. And those are some some words right there. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are going to be... I didn't know Nakash before we started talking yesterday, um, uh, on yesterday's program about it. But... Um, uh, we used this phrase on yesterday's program, the divine council, and, and you were talking about how God kind of um, how God runs the world, how God's sovereignty works. But that's going to be a that's going to be a term a lot of people are unfamiliar with. So I was wondering if to start off today, you could just explain that for us. What is the the, the divine council of God? Yes, I will. And let me just say, I guess one of the most well known authors, who by the way is a, is a friend of mine, uh, is Dr. Michael Heiser, who's mm-hmm. written the book called The Unseen Realm. I want to plug that because mm-hmm. that's a tremendous book. It's written at a at a, at a pretty scholarly level, um, but the thing is, uh, Dr. Heiser and I have the same publisher, Defender Publisher, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and so what I do is I basically, um, I mean, I, I cover some of the same material he does, but I go even further and really just connect it to today's headlines and into today's each individual life, into the life of the church, and then from there into the life that is to come and the age that is to come. Plus, I deal with five or six topics that Dr. Heiser does not deal with, so it's not just a a repeat or some kind of a rip-off of his work. And by the way, um, the stuff that's in my book, and I say this in my book, I've been teaching and preaching for 30 years, and um, and the scholars have been writing about for several hundreds of years, so neither Dr. Heiser nor I have a corner on discovery of this stuff. This is, this is not new truth, right. but, but what I do in my book is I connect the dots in a logical manner, mm-hmm. starting in Genesis, uh, the very first verse, all the way through to the to the to the garden fall to the genesis the notorious passage in genesis 6 where the sons of god come unto the daughters of men the flood right after that everything that happens from there forward the revelation and then in like i said right into today's headline news so um that's that's what I deal with now. One of the one of the huge concepts in here is this concept of the divine council. Mm-hmm. There are other synonyms used by various scholarly translations. It comes from from the same Hebrew words, but sometimes you'll read it as the heavenly host, uh, the divine court. Um, the 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 oh, there's another word too. I can't remember right now. But but the divine council, the heavenly council, the divine court. Uh, the heavenly host. Those are the four synonyms that you will find in the various translations. Mm -hmm. So what is this? Well, I mean, almost everybody listening to this, whether they've ever heard these terms or not, once I describe it, they'll say, oh, yeah, well, I've seen that all in the Scriptures. Right. Well, well, what is it? Well, we, well I, I think the easiest place to start is the book of Job, where, where Satan comes before God and the heavenly host, and he's accusing Job. And it says, and, and, and then later on in the book of Job, uh, God even questions Job when Job is complaining. He says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Mm-hmm. Where were you when the angels shouted for joy, when the sons of God gave praise. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so what's God saying? He's saying before there was ever the earth, before there was ever humankind, he already had an upper family creation. Mm-hmm. He already was surrounded by the heavenly host uh, known uh, throughout the scriptures as the divine council or the court of God. Um, and, and surprisingly, people are shocked to find out when you get to the New Testament in four different places, and I write about all this in my book, mm-hmm. we are told that the law we think of the Ten Commandments, okay, and then everything that happened at Sinai. It says four different places in the New Testament, Clark, that the law was given through angels. Now, when we read that, not having a concept of the divine counsel, we say, what does that mean? If it was just one verse, we would scratch our heads and say, boy, that's an odd verse. But four times in the New Testament we're told that. Well, 
we go all the way back into the Old Testament, and what do we discover in the book of Deuteronomy? It, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't have it in front of me, but I've got it printed in my book, where the, where the Word of God says, and on Sinai, when God descended on Sinai, he was accompanied by his heavenly host, 10,000 times 10,000 mm. of his holy ones. Mm -hmm. And then it spoke of the law, was the giving of the law was witnessed through the angelic beings. Now, this is the reason for the divine council. This is the, the reason for the heavenly court. God does not take their advice. God does not ask them what he should do. God does not go to them for them to counsel him. In fact, God says to Job, who has ever counseled the Lord? Mm -hmm. Nobody. But, well, well, why is the heavenly council surrounding him then? Why is there a heavenly host? They are his witnesses. That's why the Bible says when God judges, he judges in complete righteousness. No one will ever be able to say, well, I didn't know the law, mm. because 10,000 times 10,000 angels will speak up on God's behalf mm -hmm. and say, we were there when the law was given. Hmm. <laughs> the law was given through us. Oh, we, yeah. sur we surrounded the throne. You can't say you didn't know. Mm -hmm. We're also told in the New Testament that when we, uh, that we will have to give an account to the Lord, ultimately, but there are places in the New Testament that speak of, we will have a, to give an account before the angels. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that we will never stand before God and say, well, I didn't know that. Well, you didn't explain that to me. 10,000 times 10,000, by the way, that's 100 million angels will pipe in and say, oh, no, we were there when you heard the gospel. We, know, we, know, we were around God's throne when he spoke to your heart. You cannot charge him with unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. So this divine counsel thing is huge. Daniel sees it in chapter 7 of Daniel. He said, I saw him who sat upon the throne, right. and I saw that the courts, were op the courts were settled, the thrones were set in place, the books were opened, and 10,000 times 10,000 surrounded his throne. You get to Revelation chapter 4 and 5. What does John see? He said, I was caught up to the throne room of God. What did I see? I saw the throne and him who sat upon it. And in the middle of the throne was the Lamb, and he was holding the scroll. And around the throne were the four living creatures. And around that were the twelve other thrones. And around that were 10,000 times 10,000 hmm. angels. Mm -hmm. So what are we seeing? The heavenly host, the divine council. So as I said, now your audience is saying, oh my gosh, of course we know about this. Right. Yes but seldom do we understand the concept of it and the power of it going all the way back to the first chapter of Genesis. We hear of it right on through the, worst, the rest of the Word of God. We are accountable before a holy God who is surrounded by a hundred million witnesses. Hmm. So uh, I like it. A lot of listeners are thinking, like, they've probably never heard some of these terms before this interview, but then, uh, and then maybe they've read their Bible several times, and they've never, they've kind of read past this or just, like, not really comprehended what was going on right there. But now when they go back and read their Bibles, or if they read this book here, Gods and Thrones, um, then they go back and read their Bibles, they're going to see a lot more things there that were there all along that they'd never noticed before, won't they? Oh, listen. There are some bombshells in this book. Yes, the answer to your question is yes, but I mean... What we've touched upon today, most people are saying, oh, yeah, I've seen that. I just didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But I uncover some things that a lot of your listeners will say, I've never seen that before, but, oh, my gosh, there it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, again, it's not just me pulling stuff out of my back pocket. After I reveal it, then I put it in context with other scriptures from Old to New Testament. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the scholars, and we discover that hundreds of years ago, scholars were writing about this stuff. Well, how come we don't hear it from our pulpits? Because we want a nice, clean, sanitized, easy Sunday morning version of the Bible. Right. We don't want to deal with the supernatural and how it affects our lives. Right, right. And there's so much more there that uh, people that people could know about. <laughs> and, yes. the, and one more thing I want to ask you about before we go is that, okay, so they read a book like this, um, and, and they see all these references in the Bible of, of uh, how, how God and his sovereignty is, is kind of running the show. Um, uh, is this going to unlock for people um, a, a greater understanding of world events when we see listen, nations rising up against nations and all that kind of stuff? Is that going to make a lot more sense to people now? Listen, I, I am being inundated with correspondence. And even they can read through the inter some of the, the, the ratings on Amazon that are already being left. But I've got correspondence of people literally saying, this book has changed my life. Listen, I'm getting this. I, I, I've got one guy who's a New York Times best-selling Christian author. 
he wrote me after reading this book and he said this book is groundbreaking it has rocked my world i see everything differently now Hmm. now to me that's just i mean all praise to jesus but yes it is going to open people's eyes it will help them to see life and the word of god and the headline news and what is happening in the world like they've never seen it or understood it before i promise and 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 that's not just a a sales salesman (laughs) promise on my part i'm talking about this is the correspondence that's Mm -hmm. piling in to me and to my offices right now yeah all praise to jesus but yes it will yeah yeah well i think anyone who uh, who loves their bible that even even if they haven't heard some of this stuff before this will make you love your bible even more and and like you said see the world in a different way so god's in throne Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy, and The Return of the Elohim. Carl Gallups is the author on this book. And and tell us one more time where you want to send people to find out more about it. Yeah, carlgallups.com. You can start there. You can even read sample chapters. And uh, there's it, the whole website is there. You can't miss it. Um, but it, it, for those that shop online, the quickest, easiest place is amazon.com. Just put in Gods and Thrones, Carl Gallups. Boom, you're there. But also any Christian bookstore, if it's a good bookstore at all, they've got it either in stock or you can order it and they will know immediately what you're talking about. It's already become a runaway bestseller, so bookstores are familiar with it. Uh, so bookstores, Amazon.com, of course, and my website, CarlGallops.com. Okay, well, we do hope people will go and check that out, and it uh, would be r- well worth your time to read a book like this. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy, and The Return of the Elohim. If you don't know how to spell Nakash, that's <laughs> understandable. Just just type in Gods and Thrones or type in Carl Gallops. I'm sure it'll come right up. So um, that's, that's the book, and, and we want to thank everyone for tuning in today, hearing the interview, and hope you'll be with us again next time. This has been Clark Matthews with your Author's Corner, and Carl Gallops, thanks for being with us. Oh, it's my pleasure, Clark. God bless you. The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol, on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? Is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions and learn your destiny among today's events in the new, unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold.